Chinese water deer are a great addition to the British countryside, but they are vulnerable. They spend a lot of their lives lying out on open fields, which means they have become a target for illegal coursing with long dogs. What adds insult to injury to all of this is that the poachers don't even take the carcasses. They leave the deer where they fall. And then of course there are the ones that escape the dog's jaws, but sustain injuries. Well, this morning Zeiss professional stalker Paul and Ginny Langton, a hunting girl and keen rifle shot, are preparing to head out after a culled doe Chinese water deer while keeping a lookout for any CWDs which might be struggling. It's zeroed at 100, just about half inch high at 100. OK, so wherever we shoot the animal today, just aim straight out where you want to hit it. OK, so there'd be no, like with the 375, you aim a little bit higher. Yeah. None of that, just straight at it, OK? Paul talks through his new Blazer R8 rifle with his Zeiss DL scope on top. It's the new version of the highly successful entry-level Duralit, but it now comes with a higher spec, adopting the Bullet Drop Compensator, or ASV. Paul has the whole thing zeroed, but has never shot an animal with it, so Ginny could be doing the christening today. Talking of Ginny, who is Ginny? Well, she's our own Tim Pillbeam's goddaughter. I know, small world. Especially as Tim did not introduce us to Ginny. I wonder why. Move over, Tim Pillbeam. <laughs> we have a very casual shoot on the farm at home. We do about four days a season. So it's quite small, but we don't want a big corporate thing. It's very sort of family orientated and friends. I've, had, I've sort of grown up with hunting and shooting and it's only recently that I've sort of started getting into it myself. I've always been hunting on horseback. So yeah, no, it's been really good. Paul and Ginny get themselves sorted and start working along the field margins. It's not great light, but Paul is able to show Ginny potential animals that we could work into. Then he sees a casualty of the Lurcher boys. This, this Chinese is a female and it's um, obviously had the, the course in fraternity chasing it. Um, it's been hit it's like up the back haunch by a, by a lurch or a pit bull cross or something like that and uh, took a big chunk of hair out of it. Not that they've done any damage to it, but um, at the moment we're getting a bit of problem with that, but uh, we'll solve it. This is the first time Ginny stalked Chinese water deer and she is keen to hear more about this curious animal. If that was a, if that was a young, young animal, I'd shoot it. But this is an old female. What about the one beyond it? Beyond. That's a, that's a big buck. <laughs> the bigger bucks got in the middle of the fields on their own this time of year. So it's still got this like territory from after the rut. Right, yeah. And when is the rutting season? Um, end of November, December. Okay. Yeah, depending on the weather. Sometimes a little bit earlier, sometimes later. They then have their young in the summer? Yeah, May, end of May time. Right. They tend to have about one to three fawns really, even though they have six embryos. But they only have one, one to three fawns. Is that a unique thing for Chinese water too? Yeah, yeah. That's why people say they breed so fast. It's not. It's because they can breed in the first year. If they get their early, early forms, they're, they're mating in December. Yeah. Yeah. We leave this female bee and start crawling into what Paul thinks might be a more suitable cull doe. As we watch, a sick-looking animal comes into view. He's clearly in a bit of a state. Yep, we'll have to shoot that one. OK, we've got an uh, animal out there with a broken back right leg. Um, it's a buck. He's got a ripped uh, right ear. Um, we're going to have to take him out because uh, obviously he's been coarse and broken his leg. So, OK, Jenny, um, I'm going to stop him, OK, because I'm going any further. I need to lay down. Perfect. OK. So we'll wait for him to stand up. But if you get yourself, keep your hand warm. <laughs> your finger don't drop off. He's got a broken left tusk. If you see up its back, see all the bite marks of his back? Yeah. He's big on his right. <laughs> okay, no, no rush. Okay. Shot. He's down. Well done. Thank Good shot. Done. Good shot. Perfect. Okay, cool. <gasps> well done. Much. Good shot. He's done the animal justice. The buck drops, and Ginny's first Chinese water deer is a metal head. How did that happen? Plus, it is with Paul's new unadulterated R8. I'm a bit gutted, actually. Sorry. My new rifle, the first animal shot with it. Never mind. But it's a good shot. So is it bad luck for someone else to shoot your no. rifle? No. <laughs> not, not if it's a lady. Great shot.
Um, under pressure as well, because we definitely wanted that animal because uh, it's probably one of the dominant bucks in the area. And what happens is when they come in course in, they won't leave the, the territory. So he had to hold his ground as long as he can. Um, even the car going out or a lamp's going out, he'd just stay there and then of course the dog would hit him and um, toss him to him and he'd be away. But um, yeah, we've had three or four killed in this, this block here. So uh, not great, but uh, we've done justice this morning. We've got, got, you know, took, took an animal out which needed to be uh, taken out. So perfect cull really, a perfect shot. So good job. Right, let's go and have a look at it. On closer inspection, Paul suspects the buck would not have lasted much longer. Look at that, look. You know, the spike marks through the, through the top there. But they've bitten, bitten through. And obviously got a broken leg. Or, you know, he, he wouldn't last another another week. He'd be, he'd be dead anyway. Um, this one probably be five. If you had to, obviously the two tusks give you a, a good gold medal. And is that and is five when they're in there? Yeah, peak. Yeah, then then they'll they'll go the other way. They'll go back. So you get that in broken tusks. Hence, that's why he's probably got one broken tusk anyway. So he'd be on the way out anyway. He's on. Yeah, he's on the. He's the decline. Decline. Yeah, yeah. He's over the hills, they say. Midlife crisis is about 40. <laughs> it's a bit of an adrenaline rush and also pleased that I put the poor guy out of his misery. He's obviously in a lot of pain. So yeah, I feel like I did a good deed and I had a good day. What will Godfather Tim think of this? I think he's going to be really jealous. <laughs> <laughs> yep, we think so too. Back at the yard, Paul thinks the scars on the buck are more recent than he first thought. That's quite fresh there, look. A, sc a scab's come off though, where a scab was. Another one there, look, and the rip there. But obviously he broke free, apart from a bit of a bad leg and a few bites, he nearly survived, but went downhill. Also this time of year they haven't got much fat because they've had the rut, so they build up a big layer of fat and uh, pre-rut, and then obviously through the rut all the running around and chasing and defending the territory lose all their body fat and he's very poor condition at the end so do a lot of lying down. Conserve energy. Conserve energy. Yeah. An eventful morning and a good job done. It seems Ginny doesn't fancy giving Paul his rifle back quite yet.